for because you usually sing during that part i do and i was trying not to hence the awkward pause <laughs> and then i was like well i can't sing now um but yeah hey y'all we are back this week yes i'm mariah and i'm ratizzo and you're listening to hella foreign the podcast where we <laughs> give you a different perspective Yes, yes, yes. Um, what a day. I feel like excited but tired at the same time. So I don't know where I'm at tonight. Mm. Um, <laughs> well, the but, weekend's almost here. So yes, I'm hanging in there. there. <laughs> yes, yes. But I am really excited. And all I really care about knowing right now is how was Coachella? Oh, yes. It was really, really fun. I think um, to anybody out there who has never gone to Coachella is thinking about going to Coachella, I highly advise um, Mm. going. It's such an experience. And yes, it it does live up to all those things people talk about. So definitely check it out at least once in your life so you can say um, you've gone. Um, I had a a tremendously amazing time. Great group of people. Great artists came out. Uh, Beyonce obviously just killed everybody by like at least five laps. Um, but <laughs> overall, definitely a really, really fun experience. I had a great time. How was your weekend? Um, that's it. <laughs> I feel like I want to hear more. Like, this what? is the first time you've gone to Coachella, right? Yeah, this is definitely my first time going. Um, it's a lot of planning. I mean, you don't buy your tickets until July. Um, essentially two months after the, the festival finishes is when you buy your tickets and you have to get your hotel, um, and all the travel arrangements all sorted out. Um, Since and luckily like I had a friend close. who had gone already, so he kind of took care of all of us for the, all of us. So if you're going definitely, well, I can't tell you to plan early because you're going to have to plan already. There's no... Um, dodging that, but um, it was fun. I'm like, I don't know what else you want me to say. <laughs> I don't, don't want to spoil it for the still people who are gonna go weekend too. So I have to let them go and experience it themselves. Um, the show did get. I think most of it got streamed on YouTube. So if you guys want to catch, you know, who played or who was performing, you should definitely check out those. Um, all those. I think the whole entire set is on YouTube somewhere. Um, I think Coachella released it. It was actually live, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I did see um, advertising for that. Okay, I'll just ask one question, and then I'll leave it at that. Because I okay. thought I would get more. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> but <laughs> I guess my question is, um, out of all the performances that you've watched, or that you were able to watch, which was one that um, that you least expected to enjoy? Uh, definitely Cardi B. Oh, because, you didn't think you were going to enjoy it? No, I I see I've seen performances of her live before. I I didn't really like her VMA performance to be honest. Wow, um, I've okay. seen a, a couple performances of her live, and um, it's kind of hard for me to critique her pretty harshly because she's just starting and she's still getting a feel of like her artistry and what you know she wants to put out. Right. So I right. wasn't expecting her to be. Uh, that great or I wasn't expecting much um but I was going to see her regardless because I think her album is really good so she blew my mind completely I was very impressed and mind you she's like four or five months pregnant I think I know she put on a really good show and I think it was one of those moments where I was standing there being like 
this is why it's so amazing to be a woman. You know what I mean? We we we, we do we, it all. Yep, we give birth, we get pregnant, we give birth, and we we do so much more than men could ever dream of doing. <laughs> yeah, while they're sitting up at home doing nothing, you know. So shout out to Cardi B. I think your performance at Coachella was really really amazing, um, and she was on time and everything. It was lit. Everybody was like messing with her really hard. So yes, Cardi that's B, hella dope. Sure. Yeah, I huh? saw, like, a little Instagram, like, a mini clip on Instagram. Yeah. And at first, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, so crazy. Not crazy. Like, I just, I just nothing but respect to see her be able to perform. Yeah. But then I was, like, when watching it a little too long, I'm like, I do feel a little some type of way for, like, going in while pregnant. Not saying that women aren't allowed to or anything like that. But I was like, damn, she hella, you know, twerking it. She, <laughs> she, she performed better than Migos, and they're not pregnant at all. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, job. either way, I just hands off to her. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. We're so quaddy, quaddy. Um, But I know you're um, organizing a festival. How is that going? Yeah, um, it is next weekend. Um, so I cannot wait for that to be here and gone. Not saying like, I'm just, we've been planning this for so long, so I can't wait to get to the day of and see how everything looks. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've been going back to the plaza a lot lately and like looking at it with just like as a regular park. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, there's heck of space. But yeah. Then when you start to really look at it and like, oh, actually we need to put the vendors there and we need to zone this section off and, yeah, um, you know, it starts to fill up pretty quickly. And like, oh, yeah. And then there's going to be 5000 people or more there. Yeah. So then that takes up all the rest of the space. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited. And um, I think it's awesome. Just like in anything I, that I plan, just seeing like just a couple months ago, we were just looking through a checklist. And yeah. Like, hey, we need like to do nothing this. much. Yeah. Now it's like, all right, locking in the staff, bringing everyone else on board to fill in the other pieces for the day of. So, yes, definitely excited. Um, definitely overwhelming just because managing multiple things. Um, but so, so happy for the opportunity. Excited since SAC and that hopefully this brings out more events and this sort of changes the shifts of having hip hop-esque events um just because it does not have a good rap in the city um and just getting event permits and stuff they're always like what kind of what kind of event is it <laughs> you're like uh soul and r&b <laughs> which it is i mean in hip-hop mm-hmm. but once once you get to the rap it's like no but it's for a good cause like it's over <laughs> oh yeah um yeah. But yeah, very excited. Um, and then I, I'll definitely share more stuff in the share circle um, of stuff I was able to attend to today and this week. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing. There you guys have it. Make sure you check out um, the Soul Bloom Festival in Sacramento. Uh, the weekend, I was going to tell them the weekend, but I slipped my mind. So if you want to share the weekend, it'll be really great. <laughs> share the weekends? And when when it actually is, the dates. <laughs> oh, oh, you. <laughs> I was like, it's the weekend of the 26th. No, 28th it's the 28th. <laughs> Saturday. Um, but yeah, let's take a quick break before we get into meaty uh, topic of dating um, during our time. And we'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by Season by Diana, a fashion blog for the girl who can't really afford to buy new clothes all the time, but she's able to pull new styles by recycling the clothes she has in her closet. To check out more outfits for your fashion inspiration, please visit www.seasonbydiana.com and that's www.szenbydiana.com. You can also check out more outfits on Instagram 
and the handle is at Season by Diana, and on Facebook, um, and the URL is facebook.com slash Season by Diana. And we back, y'all. And we back. Um, so today, we're going to talk about millennial dating, even though I still don't consider myself a millennial. <laughs> Which is like, it still blows my mind every time you say that. You sound crazy. Not a million. Like okay, well, wait, hold on. How about we call it 2018? Dating in 2018, huh? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's what we so, said. We were, yeah, dating in 2018. In 2018. So, yes, I think um, Mariah brought up something that was really interesting last time that kind of sparked up this um, discussion. Do you want to reshare? Yeah, um, I thought it would be dope to sort of talk about relationships and dating, um, piggybacking, piggybacking? Oh, <laughs> picking back and off my share circle uh, from Netflix, um, Chris Rock's stand up tambourine. And I I love Chris Rock. I, I listened to him when I was way too young for show. But um, he was sort of mentioning in a stand up a piece about relationships, um, not only in his marriage, but like going back in the dating scene and how like you either fully commit or not commit at all. So I think that's important because I feel like that's what's lacking in today's dating world or um, it's just foreign to see the the true commitment. Yeah. Be like half-assing it, (laughs) Logie. You half-assing your relationship, dude. Um. (laughs) (laughs) So to to you then, what's hella foreign about commitment in 2018? Break it down for us real quick. Yeah. Um, in my eyes, I just see it like there is no commitment. It's just yeah. you have one foot on one side of the line and another foot on the other of living the single independent life, but yeah. still trying to have a companion or someone that you trust or want to have um, yeah, good chemistry with, or, you know, it just that scratch, whatever it may be. Yeah. I just feel like it's dating is like satisfying your needs for right now, not necessarily keeping it for the long term, if that uh, makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, yeah, in in a quick nutshell, that's definitely how I see it. Yeah. Um, But how about you? What's hella foreign about commitment in 2018? I definitely agree with you. I think commitment essentially does not exist. Well, I take that back. It does exist, but for us, it's like a modified version. Like, we we want, like, a half-ass commitment. Like, I want the look and feel of a relationship, but I don't want to put in the work of a relationship. You know what I'm saying? I want my, my W... I want my woman crash Wednesday photo and my man crash Monday photo, but I don't really want to be committed. I want my cake and <laughs> eat that shit, too. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. As the saying goes. <laughs> Wait, that's basically what it is. No, this is very true. Yes. Yeah. I feel like we that's definitely, exactly. We are a generation of wanting our cake and eat it too. Um, and we're very right now generation too. I think that um, we're very impulsive and very reactive and um, we like to feel good. You know, everybody wants to feel good and everybody wants like something to show off about because of feeling good, you know? Yeah. Um, going back to our dub C dub, not M M C M's. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, no shade to you if you like posting those photos. Absolutely no shade to you at all. Um, everybody has their own reasons for posting those photos. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely no shade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, damn, <laughs> we can't yeah. get shout outs. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think. Um, Dating in 2018, for me at least, personal experience, since I'm still out there. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. It's crazy. Why? Why Why is that crazy? <laughs> I feel like I'm marketing myself. For those of you who don't know, I'm still out there. <laughs> I feel like it was cool until you, like, shaded yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. this, it was just a, a moment of, ooh, oops, oopsies. I just said that. Um, you all good, girl. <laughs> But yeah, I, um, <laughs> at least, well, how about I speak for the Bay Area? Because that's where I live. Okay. One is a lot of men. There's a lot more 
sorry, it's a lot more women than men, and men know that. <laughs> okay. So they they like um, having multiple options essentially, and um, that you know throws away any kind of commitment to begin with. Um, and then two, um, I really think we're a generation of labels. You know, I think historically it's always been. And Mariah, you can probably chip into this and talk about what you kind of were brought up on. But it's always been like you you date briefly, but, you know, the end goal is to get married and to build a family. Mm -hmm. Um, But right now it seems like we got like all these other subcategories. We can have all sorts of relationships these days. Um, Or I was about to say maybe the lack of labels. But then how you have a lack of labels that creates more labels. (laughs) You know this, what I mean? This is hella foreign. Very, but the, right? The like, worlds we actually live in. Yeah. Because like Because they don't want to have a label, they've created subcategories that also have labels so they don't get the traditional labels that society lives by. Right. Which traditionally would have been one or two, like you're dating or you're married, right? But now right. we got all sorts of other labels that are not supposed to label the relationship, but that's what it is. Um <laughs> <laughs> Um, that yes, the concept is very foreign. Um, but you know, it's the world we live in. Um another thing too I was gonna add is that um I th- I think the men are just fuck a lot of fuck boys as we call it in twenty eighteen. Um and a fuck boy is debatable. A coward, essentially. You're your conventional coward. Um, they've just graduated, got a more glorified term called a fuck boy. Uh, <laughs> And the, these are men who um, are not very straight with you. They want to um, they want to have their cake and eat it too and not tell you that that's what, that's what they want to do, you know, necessarily. They're trying to get them goodies. Um, yes. And again, I can only speak on heterosexual relationships because those are the ones I'm in. Um, and I, I am confident that all these labels apply to very many other types of relationships that are not just straight. Um so that those are my three main things in in twenty eighteen, at least in uh, the Bay Area. Yeah, uh, I feel like um, when you look at uh, condensing this topic into millennial dating, yeah, I feel that um, there's like there's like one spectrum of millennials that are still the younger version of millennials. Yeah. And then, like, the older spectrum of millennials where, um, quote, unquote, situationships and whatnot or a lack of labels yeah. type of relationships are on the younger end. It's, it's, it's like I'm making this assumption, but this is just how I feel and what is going around near me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so who knows what y'all going through <laughs> out there. But, um. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like this new day and age, it's it's maybe not even necessarily um, focusing like on the fuckboy type of uh, partner or relationship, but more okay. of the sort of like what we were talking about offline of the females really putting their foot down and being like, I'm not, no more are we going to stay in relationships that we're not being satisfied or content with yeah um and we're still able to date too so like not only being either I don't know I feel like the more I'm hearing myself explain this the more I either don't know or I'm confusing myself about (laughs) what the dating is but I just feel like side note y'all I'm in a relationship and I've been in a relationship for the past like three years now. I was gonna say so you might I don't put that out there first. I might be a little rusty <laughs> on what's going on out there now, but besides the point of being in a relationship, I never was really in the dating world. Like I just didn't have time for it. I don't know how to play the games that like I'm not that I'm, I'm you like, know how they I'm say gay. it ain't no gay. I'm kidding. It is. <laughs> There's all these secret rules that just go out the window when I'm present. So, um, but yeah, there there might be a lot that I'm I'm missing in the uh, dating uh, worlds. But well, I'm gonna say uh, I was gonna say you hear all my dating stories, so I I think you're up to date. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to push you on blast, but you know, it seems really eventful, you know, really just 
who knows what you're going to find, you, you have know, front, next. Front row seat to Rotenzo's dating life. Popcorn, sure extra butter. Up to date. <laughs> <laughs> Current trends. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I love hearing the stories, y'all. It's just great. Um, no, and I love talking to you, too, because you, you have a very uh, strong uh, perception of what your relationship, <laughs> definition of relationship is should be like so let's talk about that for a little bit oh okay <laughs> just gonna jump so right I've in told, i've told y'all a little bit about dating 2018 mariah <laughs> <laughs> okay what does a relationship with 2018 look like for you yeah i mean you know just nice committed snuggly and warm <laughs> I, hate you. I know what i'm just going nice. home to <laughs> you sound like you're casually strolling down the street doing a little gato monte just nice <laughs> But I feel like the for people who don't know me, I just when it comes to a companion, partner in crime, you know, spouse for life, I never played games. If I never brought people home like when I was in high school, I never really dated mm -hmm. really ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I just jumped into this committed relationship with someone I fully knew that I would marry the yeah. next day. Like yeah. if to me, a relationship looks like you're, you're committing your time to someone that you actually see in the long run, not yeah. for fun right now. Or to me, that's not being in a relationship. That's just dating or yeah. having fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like with all that's been going on in this world, I would, I wouldn't want to be dating now. I just feel like <laughs> what you mean. I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, it has its it has its fun moments, but um, I don't think that life was meant for me. <laughs> See, I, I think it's interesting because um, I mean, just between the two of us, you have you've always had like a very traditional sense approach, rather traditional approach to dating. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been the the free bird, uh, the wild child, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm not. I'm not always um not not always i'm never just like oh we must date to marry it's we date to see what happens um <laughs> i mean but to me there's the, these flags that i see that i know like would i bring this man in front of my mom or grandma mm, if you like if, eh -eh. if it's no to any of those yeah <laughs> it's bad yeah so. i think i think for me what's interesting is I think at some point when I was younger, like much younger, um, like 18 maybe, I was probably a little bit more serious about relationships than I am now. And it was interesting because my mom always used to say, you're so young. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you're, mm -hmm. so, you're so young. You don't have to be thinking about marriage right now. Like, you know, live your life, you know, enjoy every moment and mature into a nice young woman. And then you can start to consider it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she was always just like, you don't, you know, you shouldn't be so serious at such a young age. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is true. Um, but I think I feel like I took that a little extreme. <laughs> <laughs> you went all the way to the lift. <laughs> just a little bit. Um, but that and just uh, trying, trying to understand what that means, like being too young, you know to think of relationship too seriously. Of course, you know, mom is not saying go sleep around with everybody, but she's also not saying like, you know what I mean? S don't settle down quite yet. So what does that mean exactly when you say you're too young, experience and live your life? I mean, yes, you could go date, but it's like, what does that dating look like? And I just feel like it's doomsday around these days. <laughs> so I feel like dating is, what is dating? I mean, is dating fucking around is dating actually trying yeah. to find a person to have a relationship a committed close yeah. relationship with yeah um well how many layers of goes into that i don't know it is a I lot feel like I, when i hear dating it's like you're going out to din din but see i always ask people in a relationship like for you for example do you feel like you're are you dating or do you no. say you're dating someone, or do you just say you're in a relationship? No, no. I say my partner, okay? Okay, we on a whole nother thousand yeah, level, y'all. I feel like we married in spirit, okay? Yeah. Um, 
it's to, even weird for me to say anything. It's hard for me to even say my boyfriend, to be honest. Mm, okay. Um, yeah. But but yeah. I, well, as a person who's in the dating scene, <laughs> <laughs> since I've become a spoke person for all of them, um, <laughs> I think dating is, well, I don't want to just say like going out to dinner and stuff because you do that with your partner now. You guys but don't go on dates. There's a difference between going out to Din Din to like get to know someone or meet someone or have fun with someone versus a long term relationship with going out to Din Din. I was gonna say making that life might be, decisions. You know, that might be a date, but it's not like we're dating. Yeah. 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 I think personally that you talk to someone first, which is that first initial point of contact, the inception of your friendship whatever it's gonna be okay (laughs) you're talking and um then you start dating when you start to hang out more whether it be is it dating or just hanging out well see now you want to get too technical (laughs) (laughs) but that's how i feel like that's how it gets complicated because depending on how you meet someone or yeah, depending well, like, okay. on how you meet someone or how it becomes into more than just a friendship. Yeah. Um, let me let me see if I can try to break it down even more. Let's see. Uh, oh, so, shit. dating versus hanging out. Mm, I think hanging out would more be um, more casual than dating. I think dating has... Uh, most people who are dating is because you want to be in a relationship with the person you're quote-unquote dating. Right. Hanging out can translate very easily into just friends with benefits. Maybe you hang out um, in a sexual capacity, or maybe you do hang out out in public, whether it be dinner, movies, blah, 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 blah. I think that's a very much more casual situation than dating. Okay. If you're dating someone, you most likely would want to be in a relationship with them. Whether or not that happens is another story, but... Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and then you go into the relationship which would be your boyfriend and girlfriend space okay uh hopefully exclusive at that point depending on who you are you're dating each other or in a relationship whatever <laughs> <laughs> well i mean that brings me to my next question what what does dating look like um in the zimbabwean culture like what i feel yeah. like it's different Today, now in 2018, I feel like moms is just like, okay, you do what yeah. your heart desires, but what is the what does it look like in the culture? So traditionally, um, this is what it's supposed to look like. And sorry, Grandma, it doesn't look like this, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All the love. I love you. Um, traditionally, um, you don't really date. You marry. And... Yeah. Um, a man is supposed to ask a woman's family for permission to marry the the woman. Let's mm-hmm. just say girl. So a boy is supposed to ask the girl's family for permission to marry. And specifically the father of the daughter. Um, and it's like an official ceremony you have. So um, once this man decides he wants to marry this woman, he goes to the woman's family mainly namely talking to the father and ask for permission to marry his daughter um and then there is a traditional like a dowry um ceremony that mm-hmm. we call <laughs> <laughs> uh a ceremony that we call uh when a man goes to pay lo- pay lobola um and you're supposed to pay some dues whether it be cash whether it be in livestock whatever uh, the transaction is supposed to be on. You're supposed to pay. This man is. Um, and then afterwards, if that's all done and approved, and then you become officially marriage, married. And then the Western wedding uh, comes after that as like a post-ceremony celebration of some sort. Um, and then in addition to the oh, ceremony, most people get married in the church because um, the culture is heavily rooted in Christianity, Catholicism. Right. Um, but I would say in addition to all of that, one, you don't really date. If you do date, I mean, everybody, most people date, obviously. That's what I was about to say. They don't go straight to the dowry, if I said that correctly. Um, after you just, you know, first sight 
like, oh, she beautiful. Like, what's your father's name? Like, you know what I <laughs> mean? Like, I feel like there's some time that goes by. Well, before traditionally, you get to that's that. what you would do, but you know, everybody breaks the rules over the time, over the years. So, the modified version is okay. Let's say uh, a man and a woman in Zimbabwe traditionally would uh, be dating. Um, you don't meet the parents until it's time to get married. Damn. So you okay. kind of do like a secret. It may uh, by secret I mean like nobody knows maybe who this person, what they look like, or have officially met them or have a chance to develop a relationship with them. They may not know. They may know that they exist in the you know the person's life, but like mm-hmm. nothing has been officialized yet. So you're kind of dating on the low for however long you want. You can't live together during that time period until you get married. Then when it's time when you guys decide it's, you're ready to get married, right? Then the man does his thing ask for permission to marry the girl and then they get married and that's the at the ceremony that's when like everyone is introduced formally on both sides of the family and then you get married and then you move in together afterwards got it <laughs> so I, according to my culture i'm breaking all the rules right now sorry grandma Ooh, um, he's a rebel okay <laughs> i mean like it's 2018 and uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like moms is okay with it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, moms. I mean, we just, li- we just live in a different culture. I think it's, um, regardless of what mom and grandma thinks, for me personally, my own personal, like, opinion is, I think it would be very hard for me to get married to somebody I've never lived with before. Oh, for sure. I mean, however long, doesn't matter, but, like, there's something about knowing how a person lives and being in that personal space and really getting to know them like that, that's, like, important for me before I decide to even settle down with you, so. Um, My mom's argument would be, well, that's what you figure out during the marriage. <laughs> which, is, which is an interesting segment. We could talk about, like, that, like, sort of, like, difference between then and now. But what does this look like? What is dating like in the IET culture? IET, IET, yeah. Um, All right, wait, or rather, should I say, how's your... How is your relationship <laughs> compared not, to the Haitian standards? <laughs> yeah, compared to the it's similar, um, similar ish as as for you for for Haiti of when you're dating, or they say dating is more for fun, and then when you're in a relationship, it's for marriage. Okay, so um, I mean. In comparison to, it's hard to answer this because, like, I'm just reflecting back to my own personal upbringing. Yeah. And, like, I didn't do any, like, because we, because we grew up in a strict household of, you know, school and um, the traditional female roles of being home before, like, the lights are out or, you know, not going out. Yeah. So I really did not date. <laughs> so yeah, and I feel like it's not until college where I didn't. I still didn't really date. I was just be able to, based off of who I met, knew what I wanted versus didn't want. Yeah, I'm like you didn't date. Shit, I wasn't even allowed to talk to boys until I was like 18. <laughs> yeah, what you mean? And then date? yeah, and then mom worked at the high school I was at. So who was really going to date me with you know my mom? being a French teacher, you know what I mean? (laughs) They'd be like, oh, I just saw your mom after period two, you know, we got that test. No, so it's, but yeah, so again, for the Haitian culture, it's your, you date to have fun. Um, You don't live with your partner before marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, You know what I mean? It's just once you know you're in love or you love this person, and would you marry him? Then you marry him, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, you seal the deal. You seal the deal. Day. That's it. You keep it pushing. Bag and then, him and let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Then you have the babies and keep the family going. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, with my personal experience, it's definitely different. Um, I sort of still kept it tr- or try to keep it traditional that I don't bring people home unless I knew, like, you know, I they could meet the parents and I have like high standards. Like if you're a goofball or you know what I mean? Your ego, (laughs) there's nothing wrong with it. That's just not my cup of tea. That's yeah. mm -mm. See, I try the whole, 
I, I think I'm holding more to it now that I'm older. Like, don't bring somebody home unless you're serious about them. But it was hard to do when I was younger because, like, I'm like I'm a girl. My parents are worried about my safety, and they want to know who I'm actually in a relationship with or hanging out with all the time. True, true. So I felt, I felt like uh, mom had to kind of, like, loosen up on the rules on that one due to, like, safety issues more so than just, I don't want you bringing people home. Right, but right. now I'm like adamant about mm, mm, you ain't gonna meet him unless it's real serious. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like in my mind, sort of bringing back the whole situationship thing of it's not true commitment, so it's not real. Right. And by the it, way, for the record, Mariah's favorite word is situationship. <laughs> okay, I heard it. <laughs> It's it for sure isn't. So I feel like just because I brought it up to Redizzo, I was like, oh my gosh, I heard on a podcast and then I started looking up online that they defined this undefined relationship a situation ship. And We've I thought had it was multiple a perfect conversations about conversation. situationships. Okay. So clearly Sissy feels some type of way about when I say the word out loud. I absolutely don't. I, f- I marvel at that. But the I think idea. you all up in the situation shifts. That's why you don't like hearing it. Nope. I, listen, no harm on my aunt. No feelings hurt. And no, none, no offense taken. I just find it particularly <laughs> interesting. I think it is uh, near and dear to your heart. You love that word. It's not. <laughs> I just feel like that's the best word that defines what is happening. Um, in so, our society but I now, just, I could just in see the you saying, world. I could just see you being like situation ship and then you sip your tea. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I don't know where this is coming from, but I, like you guys, come on, come on, sissy, why are you come playing on. me? No, it's, 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 it's so funny. Anyways, uh, situation I mean, let's ships. talk about it. Yeah, let's get into it then. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's bring let's bring it up. So why it's important to define what situation ship is, is. because you've heard somebody in my situation. I'm kidding. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, because I know all about it. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I love you, sissy. <laughs> we got to oh cut this part God. out. It's too long on the dating uh, 2018. <laughs> 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 But yeah, okay. Basically, what I looked up on the Googles was... <laughs> what did situ- Auntie Google say? <laughs> Auntie Google said, a situationship, according to Urban Dictionary, is when a, a relationship that has no label on it, even okay. though it's called a situationship. It's like a <laughs> it's friendship. It's our situation. <laughs> exactly. It's like a friendship, but more than a friendship, but not quite a relationship. Also known as friends with benefits, but with all the strings attached. <laughs> <laughs> that shit comes that right back That sounds like you. a conundrum, in my opinion. It is. Continue. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like when I started to look more into the term um, or label and seeing like other articles and blogs on it, I was like, damn, okay. there's this really negative... Um, negative connotation about being in a situation ship or it seems like um the storyline is always like the girl doesn't know she's in a situation ship or like you're if you are in a relationship you're being played when I sort of feel like that's not the reality like some people actually do know or choose to be in situation ships for the time period that they're right. in because they don't want to fully commit or you know, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, a lot of the articles I read were the commonalities were like, you know, you're in a situation ship if you have no title or you avoid discussing the future or you still attend events, uh, big events like weddings and birthdays <laughs> solo. That was, that was my favorite one. I was like, seriously? Wow. I mean, but when I thought about it, though, if I was in a situationship, those would be the events that you would not be going to. So we don't have those conversations up. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. See, but wait, let's go through the list one more time. Because I, I have I just to read say. a couple. I just read a couple. Okay, let's go through a couple. I have something to say as a person okay. who's uh, <laughs> single. I'm okay. about to fight for all the single people out there. Listen. Okay, sissy. <laughs> what do you got to say? <laughs> wait, go. Okay, you said if There's... you go to events. Oh, yeah. So, I'll 
So one of the articles was 12 Signs You're in a Situationship by Andrea Wesley. Hey, Andrea girl. Um, and one is Dates Are Declining. Hmm. Didn't read. Oh, and these are just the titles. I didn't type out like the full description. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. my bad, y'all. But y'all getting the diluted version. Um, but the, the list also included You Have No Title. That one I understand. That makes sense. Right. You're like, you're dating, but you're not dating. You're friends with benefits, but you're not really, you don't want to, you don't know what to call it. You don't want to call it anything. You're not my boyfriend. You're not my girlfriend. Yep. That, okay, that I understand. I agree. Um, then there was like, um, you have feelings, but not love. Like, hmm. you might have strong feelings. Like, I like you a lot. <laughs> What's wrong? I, I just, like you a whole bunch. I just see that being a, a, an insecure episode. But I like you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I never like you. Um, um, or the, the one that you were mentioning, that you still attend events solo, like weddings, Christmas parties, birthdays. See, that one, I'm, I'm like, hmm, because first of all, maybe you're in a relationship and you don't want to drag your man or your woman everywhere. <laughs> no, this is true, but I feel like, you're purposely going solo to not have the conversation of introducing the person because you don't have labels. I think that's the only difference. Okay. I see that angle. I see that angle. <clears throat> you know, it's a stretch, but I see it. Is it, though? Is it? It absolutely is. I'm like, what if he don't want to come? What if she doesn't want to come? <laughs> no, that's one thing. That's cool. But you uh, know, like, you probably wouldn't even extend the invite type of ordeal. Okay. Any, any, it's, it's, um, it's questionable. I got that. You know, you could though. debate a little bit. I got that though. one. Um, other signs are you're not dating anyone else, which is also debatable. Wait, but, um, what if you're a person who just like sing, you know, dates one person at a time? That's the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, no. You're so... So the article is 12 signs you're in a situationship and in some strong ass situationships, you're not dating anyone else, even without the title, mm. talking about the future, but you're still committed to that person. You're committed to that. But... You're committed to the no label and you're not dating someone else, which would be a, a label, I guess I could say. Correct. Eh. Interesting. You have routine sleepovers is another one. I mean, a lot of people do. It, well, I think, again, Sissy, think about this list with all the other items on the list. Collectively. Correct. I can see Correct. the situation shift. <laughs> <laughs> see? You like the word, too. Everyone. Mm, 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 Everyone don't start with, with me. me. <laughs> <laughs> you know I hate that word. With all my gods. <laughs> it just rolled off your tongue, girl. <laughs> Um, I don't um, I think when was I first introduced to it I saw an article I think Chad sent it or somebody in our email when we were talking about topics he sent an article with with uh from Cosmic or something the magazine oh, side note that was me I was just on his email account <laughs> that's that partner shit right there uh <laughs> Just so you know, because I was like baby didn't oh yeah that was me that was um I think it was was it Cosmo magazine Something like that. Yeah, it was a little blog that I saw. And I was oh, like, whoever. Oh, whoever. And I sent it to, I remember I sent it to my friend Rajan because he was like, ooh, girl, send that to me. Um, and I think I hadn't known what a, I didn't know that the ter term was already coined and that's what it was called until I read the article. I was like, ooh, what's this? Mm -hmm. Ooh. What's this? Um, but I, I do think that we do live in a world, uh, 2018, we do live in a world of a lot of situationships. I don't know if they're always by choice. Um, but I think I think the ones that are by choice, it could be, you know, out of desperation. Like, you have no other options. You just want somebody to keep you warm at night. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you would rather have something than nothing. True. Uh, you would rather have no commitment than nothing at all. Um, I just feel that that's like the unhealthy. It is. It when you when yeah. you know you want more, yeah, and you're choosing less, because then you're just cutting yourself short. Then the no, absolutely comes. Absolutely, yeah. But I mean, have you seen the temperature in the winter time? Or I'm kidding, <laughs> <laughs> girl. I know. 
when uh, when Chaz is out of town and I gotta be in that bed alone, the dogs need to be up and ready because it is a cold world. <laughs> Them sheets. Oh my god. Cold world. And speaking of which, it's almost cuffing season too. Summertime historically, you know. It's what season? Cuffing season. What is that? I know you've been in a relationship for three years, but I know you know what that means, sis. Come on. Cuffing? Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Wait, cuffing? Is this real? Like, I don't, cuffing? Like, cuff? Yes. So basically, should we pull out the, let's pull out Urban Dictionary real fast. I'll give you the real definition. Hold Wait. on Wait. Okay. Cuffing season. <laughs> you're just gonna keep <laughs> saying it you're not even using it in a sentence you're not gonna be like oh yeah cuffing like you just keep saying cuffing season that really don't help the sister out i hope you know it absolutely does let me let me show you what it means it's a show no during the oh i got it wrong i got my months wrong it's almost coming though <laughs> i'm off absolutely you too early not. girl way too early i'm thinking of the fall Anyways, during the fall and winter months, people who normally rather be single or promiscuous find themselves along the rest of the world desiring to be cuffed or tied down by a serious relationship. The cold weather and prolonged indoor activity causes singles to become lonely and desperate to be cuffed. Okay, so is it saying like you're only dating someone just because of the season Yes. to date? Yes. And then once the season's over, then they they cuffed? Like, how do you use the word? Basically, I always thought it was in the summertime. You know, I think here is what I was thinking. I got it backwards. Um, historically, it's based on the weather because when it's colder, you want somebody there to keep you, you warm when it's hot. Buddy. Right, and when it's hot, you don't want them anymore. But I was thinking more of it from a picture sense. And I feel like, this, like spring, summer early fall is when people show off things a lot more like on social media so you want your boo on your a lot of people take like trips and things over the mm-hmm. summer time mm-hmm. you want your bay trips and things like that that's what i was thinking of cuffing season in the <laughs> summer too that sounds crazy <laughs> it's <a thing. laughs> um but yes basically it's you get with someone because it's cold and when it's warm you don't want to be with them anymore because you want to be like dating Yep. It's your dating season. Yep. <laughs> that is crazy. That's pretty much how it goes. Um, I want to hear <laughs> this cu- more of this cuffing situation. How successful. I think it has to be with people who like, who are like sort of in the, the fuck boy pool, you know, who just live that life for it. Yeah. I just want you for now. I just need a snack. No, I mean, for this I think part it, of this year. That's, that's what that sounds like. I think that's a definitely a good a good point to bring up to kind of tie it back to what we were talking about earlier. I, I really oh, think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really think we really, really do live in a right now kind of situation. And um, the saddest thing for me, I will say, dating in 2018, whatever, relationships in general, because we've become such a right now uh, generation, we don't really uh, we do things like move in together within two months of a relationship because why would you want to pay a rent for two places when you can just do so for one? See, but you bootlegging the relationship benefits. You might as well fully commit then. Why be such a And that's what you would think. But if you think if you really think about it, I always tell people like when I talk to like people's parents or older people, like, oh, they moved in together. They're in a serious relationship. I'm like, I uh-uh, don't get that twisted. Listen, Not have you today. seen how much rent is? Yeah. Why would you want to pay twice as much rent when you could just pay half and have somebody keep you warm every night? And that's <laughs> the kind of like that's the kind of world we live in now. And that's I think that's what our generation thinks a lot of the time. Um, and it's really sad, you know, because we, we, we really weren't raised like that. We know a lot of us, our parents are still in a very fully committed relationship and they plan to be do so till they die, you know? Yeah. You know, but we want to create, what did you say earlier? <laughs> we want to have the most labels and have no label relationships. Yep. Um, pretty much. <laughs> because it feels good, you know? No, not only that, but it's like, I, I, I understand it to the fullest cause we all do it maybe in different compartments of our life, but you don't want to label something because then one, you have to commit to that right. role and expectation that that label holds. Right. 
or it's complicated and you know that that label embodies something different than what you truly have yeah. so then instead of saying like well i don't want to put a label on it it's just like i need to put the right label because the boyfriend or girlfriend label is not what i'm living my life like type of thing yeah so the next um, time i call you with the situation ship i could just be like hey mariah i'm in a situation ship <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to use the word if you don't want to. No, no, no. But but it, it would be relatable. Maybe that's like step one, you know, admitting to it is the first, or it's the first step, you know? But yeah, that, well, that's what I was saying in these articles. A lot of the time it was coming from the writer sharing that like normally one of the partners don't know that they're in a situation shit. Yeah. Like it would be like the girl or a guy fully committed, hello in love, you yeah. know, oh, yeah, you know, we could go on dates and stuff. Oh, but, like, on this list, on the, the 12 list, like, some of the ending things it says, it's like, you guys don't have pictures together. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like listen, not everybody you likes them to in take glass. pictures, okay? Yeah. Or you guys <laughs> haven't met their friends or, like, their real friends. You might have met, like, their party friends or group events that you can yeah. meet multiple people, but, yeah. like, you haven't met their core circle um, and then lastly, you, you know, always avoiding the conversation about defining the status of the relationship. Mm, so, that's a good one. Yeah. And I feel like when you avoid it, that means someone isn't, someone's in love and the other person doesn't want to commit. It's like, so are y'all so, dating? Are y'all together? Or, yeah. uh, I mean, you know, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Which means you single, boo. We're just you friends. Single. We're just friends. <laughs> We're just friends. Oh, my gosh. Which is not bad. Again, it's just, like, looping it back to why I wanted to bring up this topic. Because, one, I love hearing all your stories. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of people in our generation who are, are who are dating and, and just living that independent. Yeah. I'm going to eat my cake. I'm going to have my cake and eat it, too. Yeah. I cannot. Okay. Anywho. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing bad about it unless you don't know you're in one. And then um, I think it's it's it could be toxic to your own growth and happiness when you know it's not something you want. Yeah. Like I feel like there were times when when you're sharing your experience of, oh, you know, there's no labels or we don't want that. But it's like, but you did before you were dating. So how come it doesn't matter to you anymore now? Yeah. Labels weren't, if you were looking for a boyfriend or girlfriend before, but then when you meet someone, you, you no longer have that urge. Of, well, it doesn't matter anymore. It does. And it's going to be issue later. So let's just be real about the situation. Why are you wasting that time? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Again, so, you know, sometimes you need to use it to your advantage and just be like, I don't have the energy or time for a committed relationship. Um, and I'm just trying to have fun. Yeah. So I don't want the labels. <laughs> and we're not going to take pictures in public. <laughs> and I'm not going to introduce you to my friends. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but to, to wrap this up, y'all, you heard it from Mariah herself. <laughs> Why are you only putting it on me? Wait, I was about to, I was about to say my two cents. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, why, sissy? Why? Go ahead, girl. Wrap that shit. I, I do have a, a high level of respect for people who are committed and re remain committed. <laughs> okay. Uh, because many of you are out there say you are, act like you are, but you're not. Um, I'm going to call all y'all out because you Ooh. exist <laughs> more than you know. Um, and I don't think, you know, it's not for, at the end of the day, I don't think commitment is for every, anyone or everyone, excuse me. Um, and that's okay. Uh, and I think that's mm -hmm. one thing I've learned in <clears throat> dating while being an adult is that it's not for everyone. You just have to be honest about that either with yourself or with whoever you're interacting with to say, hey, here are my expectations, and if they don't include any type of commitment, it's all about communication and just being upfront about that. When you're not, when you try to act like you are, that's when you become a fuck boy, and we don't like that. <clears throat> or I don't want to keep saying it's just fuck boys. I mean, I don't know what the female equivalent fuck girl. What is a criminal equivalent of fuck boys? None, because females are not fuck boys. <laughs> I know they could be fuck girls. 
we're perfect. <laughs> we are fuck queens. Um, just kidding. Well, parents don't listen to this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I keep cussing. <laughs> Uh, we're going to tell moms that we did not record anything this week. <laughs> no, there is no episode. <laughs> but yes, definitely communication. Know who you are, what you like, what you don't like, and be real about it. Honestly, that's what makes, I think, dating more fun and visible. And you will break less hearts along the way. And um, it's 2018. <laughs> it's 2018, y'all. I let's, think... live to the, let's live in the moment like we all do anyways. Um... <laughs> you make a very good point of saying, like, owning up to it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not for everyone. It's not for everybody. To me, the issue is people still being in relationships. Right. But still practicing the situation ship right. tendencies. So it's like, again, you wasting your time. You wasting your time, and if you don't think you're wasting your time, you're wasting your partner's time because that's time being taken away from them being with the person they should be with. If it's not with you, because you don't know what you want to do, okay, that's my rant. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have a few things to share with y'all um, in our share circle. Yay. <laughs> It's Mariah. First and foremost, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We love it and we love y'all, so keep listening. Secondly, if you like what you're hearing, please like, share, and post on your social media accounts. The more the merrier, y'all, so please share with the friends and fam. And side note, we want to hear from you guys. So if you guys have questions, if there's certain discussion topics you guys want to hear in the pod, if you guys have some share items that need to be in the share circle, holla at your girl. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at hella for in the podcast, or you can send us an email at hella for in at gmail.com. So that's H E L L A number four N I N at gmail.com hi y'all welcome back (laughs) y'all i hope you guys enjoyed our conversation about relationships or dating and the other labels in between yes (laughs) um but yeah now we're gonna jump into the share circle so today um oh well this past Wednesday, rather, it was uh, Zimbabwe's Independence Day. So happy 38 years, Zimbabwe, April 18th, hey. 1880. Um, you guys will listen to this probably after all of the celebrations. So if you're out there celebrating, please have all the fun in the world. I know in the Bay Area they have one um, at Lake Merritt um, that I might stop by it later. I'm not sure. But happy 38 years, Zimbabwe. Um in addition, uh, today is Beyonce's second Coachella performance. Again, you guys will listen to this after the fact, but um, tune in. Find it on YouTube. You should watch her. She's really, really amazing. Um, I always tell people, you don't got to be a fan. Just just watch the artistry and the craft. To me, I think that's what I appreciate the most about her. She's very, Full very packaged. artistic, and she's very yeah. creative. So tune in uh, on YouTube. Watch Beyonce's Coachella performance. It was mind-blowing. And then lastly, um, Chad Bosman, Chadwick Boseman, who was Black Panther in the Black Panther movie, uh, will be delivering Howard University's uh, commencements, uh, commencement speech this year. So Howard University is one of our HBCUs here in the United States. And um, his fine ass will be there um, <laughs> <laughs> delivering their commencement speech. Um, and he is a former Howard University alumni himself. So. Not sure if you are graduating or if you're planning on attending, but um, I will definitely look out for that speech online afterwards since I won't be there. Okay, okay. I want to hear what Mr. Fine Man has to say. <laughs> <laughs> definitely going to go in the books for all those graduates this year. Yeah, absolutely. Get to be a like, part of that. It's Black like, Panther <laughs> came to your uh, commencement speech. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> no bigs. Um, okay, okay. Uh, for for my share circle this week, um, of course, got to shout out some podcasts. Um, our episode last week was about spirituality and religion. 
And right after our recording, and I had to get some stuff done, I started listening to um, a couple of Oprah's Super Soul Sundays. Um, so she definitely has invited uh, quite a few people in different areas of spirituality and religion, mm-hmm. whether they be, you know, actually in the church or just on their spiritual journey, um, mm-hmm. having conversations around that. So definitely check that out. Um, and the other a podcast I want to shout out is Still Processing um, with Wellesley Morris and Jenna Wortham. Mm-hmm. Um, they're in New York and they're writers um, for the New York Times. Um, so definitely check that out. I love their how they break down some of their discussion topics and stuff. Um, so yeah, my other share is Starbucks. Um not necessarily the incident that occurred, but seeing some of the positiv- positivity that came out of it, of, you know, instead of just, like, focusing on, you know, how obviously they were biased and mm-hmm. miss... Um, if you guys haven't heard already, one of the boss, one of the managers at Starbucks in Philly um, called the cops on two... Um, black men who were just hanging out in Starbucks waiting for a friend. And I guess Mm -hmm. because they didn't buy something ahead of time before they went to the bathroom or whatever it may be, it ended up getting the cops involved, which is like ridiculous and just more proof that, Hey y'all, you know, this is not equal. Like (laughs) what more evidence do you need? Yeah. Um, But yeah, so I was on IG and I saw the Instagram page. We buy black. And um, they might have a Facebook, too, um, or their own website platform. I'm not sure. But definitely look them up um, because then they just turned it around and was like, okay, well, let's find other um, black-owned coffee shops that we could go to and put our, our dollar in our in the black community. Right. So Support each other some more, yeah. Yeah, positive spin. Um, Starbucks did recently um, send out... Uh, and like an announcement of like, hey, we're going to shut down 8,000 stores to do like a diversity training and whatnot as a, you know, an attempt of providing a solution and make sure this doesn't happen again. Yeah. Um, Will it change everything? Who knows? Um, But at least it's like a small attempt to do better. Um, And it would be nice to, I mean, a coffee shop could shut Shut shit, shut shit down and be like, okay, uh, we need to train because clearly we're not on the same page of how you should be treating our customers yeah, or potential customers. Yeah. Um, and not seeing that in like the police department or um, other areas where they have done wrong, but you don't really see um, action of handling that as soon as possible. But um, I just wanted to at least shout out some, you know, a positive note. And yeah, there's a lot of things that we don't have to go mainstream for. We can, you know, just support our community. Support those local businesses. Yes. They are Um, important to the economic growth of our towns (laughs) and cities. (laughs) Yes, sissy. Is that a sniffle you can't sit, girl? Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Okay. This is early morning stuff. (laughs) I got that morning voice. Mm-hmm. Um, my last share is like a two-parter, but uh, this last week um, I had gone to a conference of um, where they had Kevin O'Leary, one of the sharks on Shark Tank, mm-hmm. also known as Mister Wonderful, um, do like a like a live you know speech type of thing, and with guest speakers as well. And it really focused on investing and the entrepreneur life, also bringing up things about the the stock market and buying stocks, um, trading mm-hmm. stocks, um, and things like that. And it was a really, I was going in there like, uh, I don't know, but let's just see what happens. But I like I was able to take good stuff out of it, mm-hmm. and um, hopefully can apply that to my own business, and definitely want to br- bring it back to our community. Um, but I did want to share on top of that is uh, I just, <clears throat> excuse me, ooh, um, I just saw um, Damon John, who, uh, who is also a shark, 
and Shark Tank and creative like FUBU and whatnot. Isn't that the FUBU one? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't watch the show, but I, well, I think I watched it a couple times, but I think that's the FUBU guy, the black guy. Yeah. So he is also hosting some free workshops um, that focus on, um, it's like the breakthrough wealth events okay. where it's, you know, building tools and resources within real estate and the entrepreneur world. So the days are actually coming up in May. And just so y'all know, um, it's in multiple locations from Reading, Chico, Yuba City, Sacramento, Citrus Heights, um, from May 8th to May 12th. So definitely check that out if you're trying to build yourself. And um, it's free, which is awesome. Um, another thing that I was able to take out of this, uh, of these like seminars and whatnot, is just the pure wealth that, we're, that they're in and the lifestyle that they get to live. Like Kevin was saying how, you know, they just get to choose any place every weekend um, to just visit, whether it be family across the country or wherever. Um, I'm like, damn, I want to live that life, you know, to a certain extent. To a certain extent, I know more money, more problems. Um, yeah, well, I mean, having fi- having a financial wealth and financial comfort and stability is definitely an amazing thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, it comes with its own um, issues, but I would, I would, I would say it's. I would rather live with those issues. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, but yeah, so that brings us to our next episode, uh, next Monday, and we're going to be talking about traveling yes. and sort of, um, our past trips and what we've been able to get away from that, um, get from them, not get away. Um, and just where we want to go next and how that is, um, some things that we have seen foreign in, um, our travel journeys. So yes. definitely check that out. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Hope and everybody has an amazing, amazing week. Be great out there. Be amazing, rather, and be better yeah. than you were last week. Exactly. I was told Send out that love. Be amazing. <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a good one, and we out. <laughs>